Oh, hello there. Mr. Cheap here. Today we've got another voiceover video for you. I hope you liked the new intro card. That would be the National Anthem of Sweden, also known as the Swedish Sing Song, for our intro song today. We may continue with that for a while. In today's voiceover, I will be better explaining Courtney's Winter 2021 DIY Mystery Box Challenge, which is way too many words, so we're just going to call it my new video. Um, if you want to see the original and see how poor a job Courtney did of explaining things and how much extra time she took on all of the stuff that she did in the video, there's a link in the description box down below. If this were the bottom of the screen for the video, right, right down below that point, there's a bunch of words, but there's like a little triangle button over on the side that you have to hit. When you hit the triangle button, it'll bring up a bunch of extra words and letters and numbers and stuff. And there'll be one of them that says like winter 2021 DIY mystery box challenge. Just look for the longest line on there because that's way too much to say. And you'll click on that and it'll take you back to the original video. But most of you probably already saw the original video and were as disgusted with it as I was. So now I'm going to do a much better job of explaining everything for you. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, this is Courtney. At least that's what she always says and she waves her hands in front of the camera. Everything behind her is very carefully staged. You are not able to see the mess that is spread out across the rest of the craft room here. I think at this point what she's trying to do is explain the mystery box challenge. Um, really not a mystery box because the person who filled it up knows what is in there. Uh, and there's not like clues that need to be solved or riddles. So there's really not a lot of mystery to it. You could call it a surprise box. Uh, there might be a better term for that, but surprise box would be the way I would go. And so again, this is the winter 2021 DIY mystery box challenge. Way too long. We're just going to call it Courtney's surprise box. Okay. And so in these videos, for those of you who don't know, she and a bunch of other YouTube crafters make up boxes of random stuff and then send them to each other so that they can make crafts out of it. I apologize for the dinging noises in the background. Um, that would be Courtney's computer sending alerts to me that I don't really care to see. Now, she's just going to continue to talk here. And I think essentially what she's saying is blah, 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 me, 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 blah, blah, me, me, blah, blah, blah. If anyone can name the movie that that's from, comment down below. The background here is a somewhat Valentine's themed background that seems to be going in and out of focus. Fortunately, we got a new camera person and so the focus issue should be going away. The candle burning in the background uh, appears to be a lavender scented candle. Uh, you can smell it a little bit if you want. It's a scratch and sniff. Now it's covered up with a sticker right now, but you do have to scratch your screen right now and then just kind of smell it. I, I think it's lavender. Uh, this would be her self promo where she tells everyone that we're on Instagram uh, at Courtney Loves Coffee and at Real Mr. Cheap. Um, obviously, I am Real Mr. Cheap, and you should go and follow me on Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, you should get Instagram. Now she's saying thanks to all of you for watching the video because it makes her feel good when people watch her video. And when she tends to tilt her head back and forth like she was doing a little bit there and then raise her eyebrows, that's normally a good thing. No, it's not a good thing. She says it's not a good thing, but now it is a good thing. She's raising her eyebrows again and tilting her head. This is a really long intro, and I apologize, guys. We all know that y'all don't want to see all of this. You just want to see her craft, and she just will not get into it. Uh, also, a little side note, the ukulele. Uh, over her left shoulder there, which would be on the right side of the screen because when someone's facing the camera, that's her left, but our right. Whoa, not real sure what we're doing here. Snowflakes are not brown. If you find brown snowflakes, it normally means that um, they came from polluted rain that froze as it came down. You do not want to catch those on your tongue. Uh, the polluted rain that falls from the sky is not something you want in your mouth. Now, what we have there is a broom. Uh, the broom is designed to sweep small areas where you can't get a normal sized broom in, and that is a hand broom. It doesn't have a long handle on it. And then this looks like a bracelet uh, that has been attached to a large dangly, what are those things called? Charms. It's like a charm bracelet. So you put the, the bracelet around your wrist and then the charm hangs off. Uh, eucalyptus garland. Uh, again, eucalyptus is one of those things that smells really good. It also does attract koala bears. So if you do not want koala bears in your house, be careful using eucalyptus 
what was it called? Eucalyptus garland. I almost said garden. I don't know why. We also got a wood value pack. Anytime you're crafting, you want to do something that says it's only a dollar or it's a value pack or it was on sale or I had a coupon because that's what crafters do apparently. You can't pay full price for anything. You have to get the value pack or the discount or the something else with it. But we have a wood value pack out of Courtney's surprise box, much shorter title. Now we have some birdhouses. Uh, those two were sawed in half. These things are crazy. Uh, we gotta stop with the alerts. I'll be right back. And we're back. I tried to turn off notifications and I got yelled at by Courtney. Now what we have is a bag of miniature pine cones. Those come off of miniature pine trees. If you do not have miniature pine trees, you can use regular sized ones. Uh, then she's got some sort of a plastic coated sign that said blessed and let's see what the next item is. It appears to be a milk pail. Um, for those of you who don't have dairy cows, um, you're just gonna need to go to your local dairy and ask them if they have a milk pail that they use to milk the cows with. Make sure it's a clean one because you don't want that stale milk odor on your crafts when you use this for it. Uh, C is for Courtney. It is also for Cat, Catatonic, and Catahoula. Uh, Catahoula, even though it starts with the word cat, is actually a type of dog. This is now an aroma diffuser uh, because you don't want your aromas to be concentrated. You want to diffuse them. Um, and then this is a sign that I can't read because it's written in a weird script. But it also looks kind of like those, um, not crowns, what are they called? The, they look like a crown, but they're made out of like golden leaves around the, the edges of them. Somebody comment down below and tell me what that thing's called. Like the Roman emperors used to wear them. And now we're going to get into the challenge items. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, challenge items are not really challenging for an expert like Courtney. Um, she has had, and here we go with the notifications again. She has had years of technical training uh, in crafting. She has um, three master's degrees from several prestigious universities, uh, including the University of Phoenix Online in crafting. Um, and with all of those advanced crafting degrees, they've done things like challenge items. One of her finals one year was open up the box, there's one item in it, and you have 32 seconds to craft something with it. She got an A in that class, so this is all old hat for her. Her first item back there was some sort of a hanging rack or clothes rack, maybe a coat rack or something to hang cleaning supplies on, like brooms and mops and whatever, because they got that little loop in the end of the handle and you just stick them on there. Now we're on to challenge item number two. Dun, 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 dun. That, that adds drama. I just had a dramatic effect to the video by saying that. And Courtney is laughing, because she probably doesn't know what this item is or what to say about it. Um, honestly, again, she's such an advanced crafter um, she'd be called an advanced practitioner. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry about the notifications. This would be a folding fan that says hallelujah. Um, nothing really challenging about this. You could use this to fan yourself. You could use this with three other fans because it's about a third of a circle to make a full circle and then turn it into a hallelujah clock which is probably what she's going to do with it here. Not sure we'll have to continue watching to see. Um, this is the plastic coated sign I think that we saw before. She's going to cut the plastic off. Now, normally you want to leave the plastic on this because then if you paint stuff on it or something and you don't like it later, you can just wipe it off of the plastic or then cut the plastic off and remove it and you still have a perfectly good piece. But in this case, she's going to take pieces from a library book um, don't tell the library that she cut pages out of the library book, but she did. And those cut out pages from the library book, she's then going to cut up again. Because, you know, when you have a cut up page, you just want to continue to cut it until you get exactly what you want. Now, curled edges on this, she would normally use her cheaty scissors for that, but the cheaty scissors may have been in the shop being repaired or something, I don't really know. So we've now taken the cut out library page and put it on the wooden sign that was covered in plastic and no longer covered in plastic. And now we have the polluted snowflakes. Again, polluted snowflakes should not go onto the tip of your tongue. You don't want to catch those in your mouth. 
Um, and they shouldn't have long spears sticking off of the end of them, but apparently these did, which she is now using her tin snips uh, to take pieces off. And now she's reshaping the snowflakes. Just so you know, if you actually tried to cut a snowflake with tin snips, it would not work. Um, they're very small and tin snips are not designed for precision. These snowflakes <clears throat> are kind of magnified. They may have fallen into a laboratory where scientists were using like a microscope and this is what they saw through the microscope. Maybe it's just an artistic rendering of a snowflake, um, a polluted snowflake again, but again, uh, not something that you're going to see on a regular basis unless you have a lot of pollution in your area when it rains um, and obviously is below freezing. And now she's going to take these snowflakes and turn them into not snowflakes. And it looks like make a clothes rack made of deer antlers. Um, for those of you who don't have a hunting lodge, we have several hunting lodges, uh, but at all of our hunting lodges, and at most people's hunting lodges, you make a coat rack, hat rack, clothes rack in the entryway made 100% out of antlers of animals that you have bought from secondhand stores um, and then taken all the antlers and glued them onto a pole and put a stand on the bottom of it so that when you walk in, you can hang your hat on top of it. Now, we're going to take the wood value pack again, make sure that you are only using value packs, discounted items, and things that only cost a dollar. And when we take that wood value pack, we're going to pick the hearts out of it. It's kind of like when you take a bag of M&Ms and you just pick out the colors that you want. Little known fact, and this is true, you can Google it, uh, Pearl Jam, the 90s alternative band used to have a rider in their show clause that they wanted only green M&Ms. They had to have M&Ms in their, whatever you call it, the room backstage where they get ready, but they only wanted green ones. So somebody had to go through and pick out all of the green M&Ms out of a bag and then put them into a bowl and I guess leave them out there. The other part about that that I think is a little awkward, somebody had to pick through those M&Ms with their hands and then put them in there, and you're still going to eat those after somebody else handled them? Like, that's a little odd. Oh, I see what she's done here. She's now decorating the deer horn clothing rack by hanging some uh, hearts on it. Um, that would be if you were going to do, you know, Valentine's decorations in your hunting lodge. You would do things like this on your deer antler clothing rack. Um, so... We have now stolen from the library and recreated our deer horn clothing rack with Valentine's decorations on it. And now we're on to the next thing. So here we have made some sort of a cocktail, uh, maybe a Pepto-Bismol cocktail. She may have had an upset stomach while doing this and so decided that, you know, we've got Pepto-Bismol. These things need to be pink, so we'll just go ahead and use that for our Pepto-Bismol coated miniature pine cones, which come from the miniature pine trees. More notifications. Um, I really apologize for all of this, but she won't let me turn it off. So it's not coating very well with Pepto-Bismol. I don't know that that's the best idea. Ah, I see, yes. So she has now decided that that Pepto-Bismol didn't work very well and she's gotten some fresh Pepto-Bismol that is not so thin. Uh, what you can do is take your Pepto-Bismol put it into a small saucepan on top of the stove and cook it down. And when you cook it down, it's going to thicken up. You can also add some thickener to it. You could make like a roux uh, out of some butter and flour that you've cooked down and it'll really kind of thicken that up a little bit while you cook it. Yeah, and it coats those miniature pine cones so much better with the Pepto-Bismol when you do that. Um, not real sure what she's using here for the two halves of her orb uh, that she has created to toss this stuff in, but that is the same way that you coat buffalo chicken wings. Once you've cooked the chicken wings, you put them in something and then toss them in the sauce. It makes it a whole lot easier than just trying to pour it over and you need less sauce that way. Now, this is a broken heart sign. Um, it's called a broken heart sign because obviously it's been split in several places. Uh, this, uh, this heart, you know, is representative of someone who has been through a bad breakup, someone who has lost someone who is close to them and is now broken hearted. And then she's going to take the Pepto-Bismol pine cones and put them all over it. Now it does appear that we have two different colors of pine cone here. 
Uh, I think what she did was she continued to cook down the Pepto-Bismol even more in the saucepan on top of the stove. Uh, and it kind of darkened up, almost burnt, but not quite on some of them. And that's why you get a little bit darker color on some of those miniature pine cones in the Broken Heart Pepto-Bismol Pinecone Craft. Not really sure what she's going to do with this. Maybe it is a Valentine's ornament, which you would put on a Valentine's tree. Uh, we don't have a Valentine's tree, so it's probably just going to sit in a closet somewhere in our house. And I'll try and give it away at some point later on this year when she's not looking. If you would like to receive the Broken Heart Pinecone Pepto-Bismol Valentine's ornament, uh, comment down below and we'll try and send it to you. Now what we've done is we have taken the birdhouse that was cut in half. Uh, that's why there were two pieces of it. And we've just taken one wall of the birdhouse. Oh no, two walls of the birdhouse. Um, and we're going to use those to make birdhouse wall pieces of paper. Um, the design on this is kind of late 60s, early 70s, not quite psychedelic and not quite disco. Uh, that's what that pattern is called. Um, it can be found at your late 60s, early 70s pattern store. And uh, they'll also have that in fabric, typically, if you don't just want to use paper. You can get a couple of yards of that and craft with it as well. Now we're going to go back and glue our birdhouse back together. So she chopped it in half. Now we're going to glue it back together. Um, or at least we're going to put walls back on each half of it. And then she's just not going to explain very well anymore what she's doing. Now... She is taking her miter shears, um, and miter shears is a crazy invention. Miter saws is a real thing. Miter shears is not a real thing, and if you look, she didn't even cut it at a specific angle, so I'm not really sure what the point of using those was. She's just cutting straight. So you could just use 10 snips or something else for that and see what happens with it. Um, I don't know what we're doing here. She could, probably could have just used wooden popsicle sticks, it looks like, instead of cutting up whatever that little crate was that she's using for everything. Um, we're back to the miter shears, but we're just cutting straight with them so she could use the 10 snips for that. Not sure why we're using the miter shears. And it looks like she is using popsicle sticks. So again, you could have totally just used popsicle sticks instead of cutting up whatever the other thing was that she cut up, unless it was in the box, but I don't remember seeing that in Courtney's surprise box. Uh, now we're going to add more pieces of wood onto the side. Oh, this is like an addition to the birdhouse. So the birds who lived in this house went to their local municipality. Uh, they pulled a permit. They got an architect to do some design work for them, and now they're doing a remodel. This looks like... Um, you know, an add-on, an addition to the house. Maybe those birds who lived in that birdhouse are having some little baby birds. And so we needed to add a nursery onto the side here. And so Courtney is essentially trying to do birdhouse construction. Um, she is not a licensed contractor, uh, and therefore you should not listen to her in regards to anything having to do with structure or, you know, building code compliance, things like that. But if it's just a birdhouse, you know, maybe you're okay with, with doing some construction that way. Now, uh, these books were not in the surprise box, uh, so kind of cheating that she used those. I mean, they do get to use whatever's in their stash, and let's be honest, Courtney's stash is ginormous, so she probably had those somewhere. Now we're on to challenge item number one, um, which is some sort of rack. Again, not sure if it's for clothes or cleaning supplies. In case anybody is wondering, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond wants Courtney to download her updated app. These are the types of notifications she gets all day. Not sure if you guys get the same things, but they're pretty annoying. We're now on to the Hallelujah fan sign, which again, I think she should take and uh, put two more of those fans with it, which would make a full circle and then turn it into a clock. But she's not going to do that. She's going to take the whole thing apart. Uh, that is Courtney's kind of repertoire. If, uh, if you haven't watched any of her videos before, most of what she does is she buys something that was designed one way and then she totally takes it apart and cuts it up and makes it something totally different when she could have just bought something that did that instead. Except that this is a challenge item so she needs to use it. So she's using both challenge items in one craft. Uh, this is worth double points. I'm not sure what the final score was for this, uh, this mystery box challenge. 
uh, also known as Courtney's Surprise Box, but she did get double bonus points for using both challenge items in a single craft. I think it's typically 50 bonus points per challenge item, but you do get double if you use them both in the same craft, so that would be 100 points per challenge item with both of them in here. That's 200 points for this craft. Um, I do believe she made it into the Mystery Box Challenge playoffs, uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on the final rankings for the season and see if um, she's going to not only make it through the playoffs, but into the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and eventually the crafting Super Bowl. Uh, what we're doing here, I have no idea. Oh, we're making X's. It's saying, hey, don't put anything here. Uh, these are like warning indicators so that you don't just randomly put something into a spot where it shouldn't be because stuff is just supposed to go onto the hooks, not in the area where the black X's are. Now we're going to take the fan pieces that could have been hands on a clock, and apparently they're not going to be hands on a clock because we're cutting off the pointers, which would point to the numbers indicating hours, minutes, and seconds and we're going to spray paint them. Now this is very advanced for Courtney. She does have those advanced crafting degrees, but she's horrible at spray paint. Oh, she spray painted this already. Now it's black. And then we're going to glue these little pieces from the fan on as accent pieces, which is going to add some height to the piece. Um, adding height to the piece makes it look taller. Um, or if you're standing on top of it, makes it look like things are further below you. And if you're afraid of heights, you don't want to add height to anything. So for those of you who are afraid of heights, don't do this in your craft. We have now finished the clothes hanger or cleaning hanger rack um, and painted it black and put some stuff up on top of it to add height for those of you who aren't afraid of it. And there we go. That is the challenge item finished. 200 bonus points for Courtney. We'll see what the final score is in a little bit. Now, here is the bracelet we talked about earlier. That's the bracelet with the charm on it. Um, she didn't like the charm, apparently, so we're going to paint over it. And by painting over it, we've now allowed her to make a charm for whatever she wants to make a charm for. So if you have one of those charm bracelets, uh, you know, you can make your own. Oh, yeah, so this one's going to be flowers instead, which is probably a good idea. Um, you could use it like a wrist corsage if someone is taking you to a formal dance at the you know high school, whether it's prom or the homecoming dance, something like it. Um, and these are not real flowers. We've discussed this in previous voiceover videos. You don't want to use real flowers uh, on your crafting projects, especially when there's wood involved that it's underneath because if you try and water those real flowers then the wood's going to get wet and it's going to rot and that's just going to be bad. So now we've made a nice corsage and you can wear it on your wrist with the bracelet, the beaded bracelet that's up at the top of it. She also added some Pepto-Bismol pine cones to it um, and I think those are the eucalyptus leaves. Again be careful with those if you don't like koalas. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I have now explained it better than what Courtney did. We will see you guys in the next video.